In the core biology unit B1, we looked at homeostasis, which was about maintaining a constant internal environment. We learned then that water levels in the blood need to be controlled as water is an important component in cells and is also used to regulate temperature through sweating. This video is going to take a more detailed look at exactly how water levels are controlled and how the kidney operates to filter the blood effectively. Before we take a closer look at the kidney, let's look at the urinary system as a whole. The job of this system is to filter and clean the blood, so the first thing to notice are the large blood vessels joined to the kidneys. The renal artery brings blood to the kidneys under high pressure. This high blood pressure helps to filter the blood in the kidney as we'll see later on. Leaving each kidney is a tube called a ureter which connects the kidney to the bladder. The bladder stores the urine which has been produced by the kidneys and a single urethra leaves the bladder carrying the urine away from the body. The filtered blood leaves the kidney by the renal vein. The most important and complicated part of this system is the kidney, so let's look more at what's happening inside. We've already seen how blood arrives to the kidneys under high pressure through the renal artery. Urine leaves the kidney through the ureter and filtered blood leaves the kidney through the renal vein. Inside a kidney are many thousands of tiny structures called nephrons, each doing a job of filtering the blood and producing urine. Let's look at a single nephron to see what's happening. Blood arrives under high pressure into a network of capillaries called the glomerulus. Capillaries are leaky, so much of the liquid and soluble material within it leaves the blood and enters the Bowman's capsule. This liquid passes through a very narrow tube all the way to the bladder. Along the way, some of the water and the substances dissolved in it are reabsorbed back into the blood. The substances in this solution include urea, which is a waste product produced from a breakdown of excess amino acids in the liver. Because it's a waste product, none of this urea is reabsorbed back into the blood, so it all passes out in the urine. On the other hand, glucose is also present in the solution. Glucose is needed in the blood for cellular respiration, so it's selectively reabsorbed as the liquid passes through this first convoluted tubule, returning all of the glucose back to the blood. Some water is also reabsorbed at this stage. To enable this to happen, the capillaries follow the nephron after they leave the glomerulus. The remaining liquid passes through the loop of Henle before going through another convoluted tubule. The nephron then empties into a collecting duct that in turn empties into the urethra, carrying the urine to the bladder. As it passes through the collecting duct, some more water is reabsorbed back into the blood. The amount of water reabsorbed at this stage is controlled by a hormone called ADH which is released by the pituitary gland in the brain, depending on how much water there is in the blood. If water levels are high, less ADH is produced, meaning little water is reabsorbed. This means more water is added to the urine, lowering water levels in the blood back to normal levels and producing a higher volume of urine. Conversely, when water levels drop, more ADH is produced. This allows more water to be reabsorbed into the blood before it leaves the kidney, reducing the volume of urine being produced, crucially without affecting the amount of urea being removed from the blood. This negative feedback keeps water levels in the blood at constant levels. This control of water is known as osmoregulation. If someone's kidney or kidneys are not working properly, there's a couple of options available. Kidney dialysis involves being connected to a large machine that operates as an artificial kidney as your blood passes through it and back into you. You need to be connected to the dialysis machine for several hours every few days to keep urea levels in the blood from rising to dangerously high levels, so clearly this form of treatment impacts heavily on lifestyle. An alternative is kidney transplant, but this relies on a kidney with matching tissue types being available. So. Water levels in the blood are controlled by the urinary system, which also works to filter the blood and remove urea from it. The urinary system consists of the renal artery and vein, kidneys, ureters from each kidney leading to a bladder, and the urethra leaving the bladder. Inside the kidney are many thousands of microscopic nephrons, which are little filtering systems. Blood is filtered in the glomerulus and the filtrate is collected by the Bowman's capsule. Glucose is reabsorbed in the first convoluted tubule before the remaining filtrate passes through the loop of Henle 
another convoluted tubule before entering a collecting duct. Here water is reabsorbed depending on how much ADH has been released and through this negative feedback system water levels are kept at a constant level.